When you crawl under a machine that's only supported by the hydraulics, you're betting your life on an O-ring. By following safe blocking and cribbing procedures, I've been able to stay on the job for 37 years. Safety. We tend to think it's only for the other guy. You tell yourself, accident, injury, it won't happen to me. As a service technician, working in, around, and under heavy equipment is part of the job every day. What might seem to be a common daily procedure can potentially be risky, even deadly, if it's not done the right way. A key part of safely performing service on Caterpillar machines is using proper blocking and cribbing techniques. In this video, we'll see how to correctly block and crib machines in the shop and in the field. Blocking and cribbing procedures are not complicated and they won't take up much of your valuable time but they go a long way toward assuring your safety and the safety of others on the job. Before showing how these procedures are done, we'll define the terms blocking and cribbing, then look at what tools are needed and review basic safety measures. Blocking is a general term used to prevent a machine, attachment, or component from unwanted or unexpected movement. For example, on a level concrete surface in the shop, Blocks or jack stands are placed under a machine after it has been lifted so that service work can be done safely under it. Cribbing involves placing blocks in a cross pattern to support machine or component weight when concrete or any other solid surface is not available. Cribbing creates a large support base and is generally done in the field where terrain and surface consistency vary. However, in some situations, cribbing may be done in the shop when an elevated platform is required to raise a hydraulic jack. There are some general safety guidelines to follow when lifting and supporting heavy weight. For your own safety and the safety of others in the work area, never depend solely on hydraulics for support and never work under a machine or heavy component that has not been properly blocked or cribbed. Specific service procedures and safety details for all Caterpillar machines are provided in the Caterpillar Service Manuals and in the Service Information System, SIS. Before lifting, be sure you know the weight of a specific machine or component so that you use tools which have the capacity to handle the stress placed on them. The disassembly and assembly module in the specific service manual for every Caterpillar machine provides the weight of all components, implements, and attachments. Always refer to these manuals before you start to service any machine. Sometimes it's easy to either forget or ignore personal safety equipment, such as a hard hat, safety glasses, and proper footwear. Caterpillar always encourages using the proper personal safety equipment for the job. Also, it's a good idea to keep a checklist handy, particularly when you're going to be away from the shop and without convenient access to necessary tools. Speaking of tools, let's take a look at what you'll need in your blocking and cribbing toolkit. Keep a supply of wooden blocks in your inventory. They're one of the most important parts of any blocking or cribbing procedure. Now, we're not talking just any kind of wood. The block should be made from oak and measure 6 inches by 6 inches by 30 inches. You might ask, why use oak wood? Can I just get some wood pieces from a lumber yard? Caterpillar recommends oak because of its hardness and its ability to withstand a great amount of weight stress. On the other hand, common wood like pine is relatively soft and has a tendency to split, chip, and weaken under a heavy stress load. Keep in mind that all new blocks must be inspected when they arrive at the shop. Look for splits, rounded edges, or other visible defects. If you find that the wood is poor quality, return it to the supplier. Don't take a chance. Previously used blocks in your inventory should also be inspected to ensure that deterioration or change in condition have not occurred. Blocking a machine is not always done with wood. Jack stands can also be used for blocking in the shop where the ground is relatively hard and the surface is level. Again, inspect the jack stands for cracks or other damage before using them and be sure they are rated for the amount of weight they're going to support. 
if the weight ratings on the jack stand itself have been obscured by paint or wear, you might have to search for them in original specification sheets, which should be on file in the tool crib or shop office. Bottle jacks and other types of hydraulic jacks can be used in the shop and also in the field. Remember, these jacks have relatively small footprints, which means that they'll have a small base for weight support. So if you're not working on a hard level surface, use these types of devices in conjunction with blocks to increase their base size and stability. The maximum weight capacities and ratings for these types of jacks should be attached to each jack or listed on the appropriate specification sheets. Other lifting devices include in-shop overhead cranes and field truck hoists. Cranes have a variety of weight ratings, so make sure the crane you're about to use is capable of handling the lifting weight you've assigned it. Never exceed the crane's maximum weight capacity. Inspect your cranes on a regular basis for proper operation and identify any damage. In the field, service vehicles are often equipped with a hoist, similar to those in the shop. The vehicle hoist is also rated for maximum lifting weights. Inspect your equipment often to ensure proper operation. Again, never exceed the maximum weight rating for any lifting device, such as chains, straps, and wire ropes. In addition to the tools mentioned, block all opportunities to restart the machine. Use lockout tagout markings on cab switches, levers, and knobs. When appropriate, remove the key from the start switch, disconnect the battery cable, turn off the disconnect key, or physically padlock the access door to be sure no one starts the machine while you're working on it. Well, now that we're familiar with the terms blocking and cribbing, along with the tools needed to do them, and have reviewed basic safety measures, it's safe to say we're ready to go to the shop and put this information to work. Obviously, it's not possible to show procedures for every component on every machine. So we'll look at a few typical examples that show proper blocking techniques. First, always lower the attachments of any machine to the ground or use locking brackets to lock the hydraulic cylinders and prevent them from moving unexpectedly. Don't take a chance that the hydraulic system alone will hold the attachment in place. If you do not have locking brackets, block the attachment with a jack stand or oak blocks so that it cannot drop to the ground. Here, a roller frame is going to be removed from a track loader. However, for the purposes of this video demonstration, we'll focus on the procedure for safe blocking. Consult the service manual for detailed procedures on proper track roller frame removal. Where necessary, verify machine weight by referring to the machine service manual. Always compare the maximum capacity of the selected method of lifting to the machine weight. In this example, we've chosen a hydraulic jack to do the lifting. Begin by using the machine's hydraulics to raise the bucket to a height which will allow proper access to the front of the machine for placement of the hydraulic jack. Once the bucket has been raised, Use the locking bracket that is supplied with the machine or available from the tool crib to lock the hydraulic cylinder. With the hydraulic cylinder locked, lower the bucket to the full dump position. Next, place the jack in the front center of the machine. Always maintain at least three points of support by placing a jack stand in the front. However, due to varying weight limitations on jack stands, four points of support are demonstrated in this example two jack stands in front, and two jack stands in the rear of the machine. Raise the front to a height that will allow you to place the front jack stands into position. Then use the jack to lower the machine until it's balanced and resting on the jack stands. With the front of the machine properly raised and secured, move to the rear of the machine and position the hydraulic jack in the center so that two jack stands can be positioned, one on each side of the jack. Then raise the rear of the machine and place the jack stands on both sides of the jack. Now lower the machine onto the jack stands. Next, remove the locking bracket from the hydraulic cylinder and lower the bucket to the floor. This provides additional stability while the machine is raised. 
with the machine properly raised and secured, removal of the roller frame can proceed. Well, now that we've seen an example of blocking a machine in the shop, let's go out to the field to see how blocking is done there. Due to the fact that there are various types of repair and terrain, it might be necessary to adjust the number of blocks that are loaded onto the field service truck. Always remember that before servicing a machine, it must be on hard, level ground for it to be blocked or cribbed. In this first field example, as part of overall machine service safety, we'll look at the procedure to properly remove a machine's bottom guard, commonly known as a belly pan. There are a number of instances when the belly pan must be removed in order to service a machine. For example, you would remove the belly pan when repairing or replacing hydraulic hoses, performing lower end engine repair, repairing an oil leak or pump in a transmission, and for most service work on powertrain components. Here in this example, the belly pan is hinged on one side. To begin, a chain is used to support the weight of the pan and control lowering it. The chain used must be rated to hold the pan's weight. The basic weight of the pan can be found in the appropriate disassembly and assembly manual. It's important to note here that dirt and debris often accumulate above the pan and can add to its weight. This additional weight should be taken into consideration before you select the chain that you're going to use. Use at least double the weight listed in the D&A. Begin by hooking the chain securely to the track located on the side of the machine where the pan is bolted. Then run the chain under the pan and out through the track on the other side. Hook the chain to the truck hoist and slowly pull the chain so that it is taut and can serve as a strap to keep the pan up as the bolts are removed. Next, block the pan on the side where the bolts will be removed in order to prevent it from falling if chain or hoist failure occurs. At this point, with blocking in place, the bolts can be safely removed. Once you have removed the bolts, move out from under the pan, then reach underneath with your hand and remove the blocks. Now slowly let out the hoist cable so that the belly pan lowers on one side. When using a belly pan that is not hinged, you'll have to hook two chains to the track on one side of the tractor. For this demonstration, it's necessary to create room under the machine for the work to be done. To lift the machine, Two blocks are placed directly behind the tracks on both sides of the rear of the machine. Then the machine is backed onto the blocks. Using the machine's hydraulics, lift the front and place two blocks under the front of each track. With the blocks in place, lower the machine onto the front blocks and begin the procedure. Separate the chains so that one of them runs under the front of the pan and the other runs under the rear of the pan. Just as we did in the previous procedure using one chain, this time you must run both chains out through the opposite track and onto the truck hoist. Then slowly raise the hoist cable until the belly pan is securely cradled. Remove all but two bolts from the pan. Then move out from underneath the pan. Reach in with your hand and remove the final two bolts. When this is done, Lower the belly pan to the ground by slowly letting out the hoist cable. With the engine now exposed, you can proceed with necessary service work. Remember, belly pan removal can be extremely dangerous. Always make safety your first priority. Now let's look at another field procedure involving track removal. This procedure will require construction of a crib at both the front and rear of the machine. Always make sure that the ground is hard and the surface is level and both cribs have the same height. First, we'll build a crib at the rear of the machine. This crib should be built to a height as close to the bottom of the machine as possible. Next, using blocks, create a solid platform to support your lifting device. This platform should be located to the rear of the crib you have just built. Now raise the rear of the machine to a height that will allow the final cribbing blocks to be put in place. With the final two cribbing blocks in position, lower the rear of the machine until it's completely resting on the crib. 
Next, using the machine's hydraulics, raise the front of the machine and slide blocks under the tracks for safety. Then build a crib under the front of the machine, high enough to support the machine and free the movement of the tracks. With the front crib completely constructed, remove the safety blocks from each side of the front and lower the machine onto the crib. The machine is now resting on both cribs and the track is off the ground. After service on the machine is complete, you're ready to move the machine off the cribs. Begin by raising the front of the machine using the implement hydraulics. When the front is safely raised, slide blocks under the tracks. Remove the cribbing from under the front of the machine and then also remove the front safety blocks. Again, Caterpillar always encourages using the proper safety equipment for the job. Once the front of the machine is safely lowered, reverse the procedure that raised the machine demonstrated earlier in order to lower the rear of the machine. In this video, we have shown you a few ways to correctly block and crib machines, attachments, and components in the shop and in the field. Here's a quick review. First, always keep in mind general safety information like wearing the proper personal protection equipment and inspecting your work area. Always use the right tools for the specific service work you're going to perform. Know the maximum weight limits of all devices and tools you're about to use. Know the weight of the machine or component to be lifted. Inspect wood blocks for splits, cracks, or rounded edges. Inspect jacks and stands for damage or wear. Never position yourself directly under a machine or component that is not blocked or cribbed correctly. Finally, always refer to the Caterpillar service manuals for correct procedures on the specific machine or component that requires repair. Remember, good blocking and cribbing practices lay the groundwork for safe machine servicing. Unfortunately, safety procedures aren't used by everyone. Uh, Bill was a good guy and a good worker, but he got just a little careless and took too many chances. Safety at your service. You don't have to go far to get the message. It's right around the block.